Late last night, in the wake of Prime Minister Netanyahu's re-election and his statements just before Election Day that he didn't see a Palestinian state happening, White House officials said the U.S. might now stop protecting Israel at the United Nations, a reversal of decades of policy. Barack Obama has congratulated Benjamin Netanyahu after his victory in the Israeli election. In the phone call, he emphasized the deep ties between the two countries. The message was not all rosy, though. Washington is now hinting it may withdraw its support for Israel at the United Nations over the issue of Palestine and the Iran nuclear deal. The U.S. has uh, just removed Iran and Hezbollah from its list of terrorist threats to the United States. There is a notable rift between the governments of the U.S. And, and Israel, and this could be leading to real changes in policy. All right, guys, it's certainly going to be interesting to watch this all play out. Everybody was waiting for the elections. Now they've happened, and we are going to be watching carefully as we move forward. Guyana Chichikan from Washington, D.C. for us. You can't force the people of Israel, who've just elected me by a wide margin, to bring them peace and security, uh, to secure the state of Israel, to accept terms that would endanger the very survival of the state of Israel. I don't think that's the direction of American uh, policy. I, I hope it's not. Our preference is certainly, and it has been, it was, it is today, it was yesterday, it was three days ago, for a two-state solution negotiated between the parties. Certainly the Prime Minister's comments from a few days ago brought into question whether he was, uh, uh, remained committed well, to that. President Obama called the Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, to congratulate him uh, this afternoon. Uh, meanwhile, there's back and forth with the White House and the State Department saying there may be a change in U.S. policy when it comes to two-state solution, pushing the U.N. Uh, to pressure Israel to do that. Here's exactly what Prime Minister Netanyahu said before the election the other day about this topic. Uh, this is through a translator. Anyone who is going to establish a Palestinian state, anyone who is going to evacuate territories today is simply giving a base for attacks to radical Islam against Israel. This is true reality that was created here in the last few years. They who do not understand that stick their heads in the sand. The left are doing it, sticking their head in the sand time and time again. The questioner, so if you are prime minister, a Palestinian state will not be formed? He says, indeed. Megyn Kelly asked him about that. In 2009, you said you supported a peace deal that would recognize a Palestinian state, but the day before Tuesday's election, you completely reversed that. Why? I didn't. I didn't retract any of uh, the things that I said in my speech six years ago, calling for a solution in which a demilitarized Palestinian state recognizes a Jewish state. I said that the conditions for that uh, today are not achievable. Because basically the Palestinians are tied with Hamas. Is that the government of the Palestinians is now in an alliance with Hamas. Mm -hmm. How can you make a peace agreement, a two-state solution, hand over control of the West Bank to a government that includes Hamas, which is not only dedicated to the destruction of Israel, but rules a territory called Gaza, from which it has twice initiated terror wars because it simply will not accept Israel's existence. They are either trying to stab Israel in the back by supporting a UN resolution that will call for withdrawal, unilateral withdrawal of Israel without peace, without recognition, without a renunciation of terror, and will simply leave Israel helpless against 50 years of American policy, against the existing UN resolution, which is from 1967, the famous resolution 242, which says that Israel will withdraw to secure and recognize boundaries, and these are insecure boundaries. President Obama released a video address directly to the Ameri to the I'm sorry directly to the Iranian people here's part of it the days and weeks ahead will be critical our negotiations have made progress but gaps remain and there are people in both our countries and beyond who oppose a diplomatic resolution my message to you the people of Iran is that together we have to speak up for the future we seek what do you make of that well this is unusual in American history a president addressing uh, a, a serious adversary, enemy of the U.S., where the leader leads chance of death to America, 
And in the midst of it, he takes a swipe at a most loyal ally in the region. Obviously, he was referring the, to Israel. If only he would address as warmly the Israelis as he does the Iranians and the, their leaders.